Good morning, friends. We're glad that we have this opportunity to worship with those of you who are not yet comfortable returning to the sanctuary for worship. It is the Sabbath, and it's time to worship God. Psalm 24, 7 through 10 tells us, Stretch toward heaven, you gates. Open high and wide. Let the glorious sovereign enter. Who is this splendid ruler? The Lord of power and might. The conqueror of chaos. Stretch towards heaven, you gates. Open high and wide. Let the glorious sovereign enter. Who is this splendid ruler? The Lord of heaven's might. The splendid ruler is God. Let's pray. Eternal God, turn and be gracious to us, for the road is long and hard and we are weary. The trials of life wear us down and we need you to sustain us. Show us your favor and offer to us your blessing, that we may abide in faithfulness and not be put to shame. Comfort us, O God, and revive our souls. Grant us the endurance to take up our cross and follow you on the difficult journeys ahead. Amen. Our scripture this morning comes from Philippians 3, verses 4 through 14. Hear the word of God. I myself, I, I myself have reasons for such confidence. If someone else thinks they have reasons to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard to the law of Pharisee, as for zeal persecuting the church, as for righteousness based on the law, faultless. But whatever we were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow attaining to the resurrection of the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do. Forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. If there ever were a time in between, this would be it. In normal time, I know what June and July and August bring, and it's almost like I'm on a schedule, a routine, because things have happened that way for so long. May and June, beginning of June at least, are consumed by VBS. Vacation Bible School and the great way that we do VBS here. And for a week we entertain and educate and make friends with all of these children. And then we take it all down and we catch our breath and we put it away and we garner what gems of knowledge we need to take with us as we plan next year and we move on because it's time to send kids to camp. And sending kids to camp means chasing forms and chasing candy money and making sure all the paperwork is in and it's filled out right and that all the kids have the camping list of required stuff and that all of that stuff 
gets into the cars when we take the kids to camp. Well, after camp, there's a couple of lay low kind of weeks when I can think about preaching schedules for next year and programs and all of that kind of thing. And then a couple of weeks of vacation. And then it's right back because we all know that the church here, the real church here, doesn't start with Advent, which is when the liturgical year starts. And it doesn't start with January 1st, the way our secular calendar starts. <laughs> but the reality of being in a church is, is that the church year starts when the kids go back to school. And there is all sorts of planning to be done about rooms and teachers and curriculum. And there's other things that start up, choir and band and fellowship time and adult Sunday school in the fellowship hall and the nursery and all of these things that require mega, mega, mega portions of planning. Well, to plan, you need when the you, you need to know when the future begins. And in this in between time, we have no idea. Hoco, the local school district, hasn't told us yet. They're still trying to figure it out. We're not sure even when school does start what the requirements are going to be and whether kids are going to have band or if they're going to have um, sports activities and all of that kind of thing. We don't know much of anything. We're still being told the details about safety and health and we hear verbiage here and there about, you know, another surge and maybe another stay at home order. Nothing comes with dates and nothing comes as fact. And that makes this in between time really hard to live. And just because I'm impatient, just because I want to know, doesn't make a lick of difference. We are living in the meantime. How do we live in the meantime? Well, Paul once again gives us guidance. It is Paul that reminds us that in the meantime there are certain things that we need to not just remember but that we need to live. We need to remember that nothing counts by Christ. And if by Christ, and if anybody knew that, Paul did. Listen to his pedigree. Where he comes from, what he has done, how he has been educated, the role he carries, the honor he is given. He's really good at his job. And Paul did it with a great amount of passion and I think probably with a great amount of laud and honor from those standing around him. You know what Paul calls it? After he has encountered Christ? Paul calls it garbage. Henri Nouwen, the late theologian and spiritual writer, tells us that we often believe that who we are is based on what we have, what we do, and how people think about us. Well, if that was true, Paul really had it licked, but Paul, remember, says, oh no, I didn't. All of that stuff, all of that stuff, my pedigree was nothing. It was worthless. It was garbage. Nothing counts. But knowing Christ, not standing still, but deepening that faith in Christ, not staying at a place of that initial encounter, but ever growing in faith and obedience to Christ. Paul was a great theologian. 
But he also knew that faith was not just a matter of theological constructs and right thinking. Paul knew that faith was about action and about doing and about living. Faith grows by study and prayer, but faith grows by practice, by success and failure. No matter how many times, no matter how hard it is, even in the unknowns of meantime, of the meantime, Paul knows you got to keep going. Nothing counts for Paul except for pressing on. I love that image in Chariots of Fire, that movie that came out, gosh, I think in the late 70s, early 80s, that carried the story of the Olympic runner from Scotland who refused to um, run on Sundays and forfeited gold medals because he refused to run on the Sabbath. But there's this beautiful image of him running for a race that he felt was worthy of running. And as he runs, you can see every muscle in his body working to push him ahead. And you can see the wind blowing in his hair. You see the beads of sweat on him from how hard he was working to win that race. And the closer he got to that finish line that his eyes were just fixed on, you could see his chest pressing forward and his body pressing forward to the point that when he went through that tape at the finish line, his whole body had pressed on and that's how he had won. Every bit of his existence was put into the cause of winning that race. Now, in the meantime, it's a funny kind of phrase. It's a phrase that's used when something big is happening here in a, in a book or in a story and then there's almost this subtext that reads, in the meantime, so-and-so was doing such-and-such, such, or this or that or the other thing was happening. And the big thing is what you're focused on, but there's all this stuff going on. In the meantime is how Christians keep going in the times when we don't know the shape of the future, in the times that we don't know what the calendar is going to hold, in the times when we're impatient to get going, but we can't chase the regular goals, in the meantime is how we make best use of God's time between what was and what is to be. And we do it by pressing on, and we do it in Christ. I love how Paul finishes this chapter, forgetting what is behind and straining towards that which is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. That's how we live in the meantime. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Our affirmation of faith this morning comes from a brief statement of faith, which is one of the um, foundational faith statements of the Presbyterian Church. It reads like this. In a broken and a tearful world, the Spirit gives us courage to pray without ceasing, 
to witness among all peoples to Christ as Lord and Savior, to unmask idolatries in church and culture, to hear the voices of people long silenced, and to work with others for justice, freedom, and peace. That's how we live in the meantime. And now hear this charge from the book of, from the letter to the church at Corinth. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. So go in peace to serve the Lord in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.